Hallelujah. Come on, welcome to church. You're welcome to church this morning. It's the first Sunday in July. I'm sure you are grateful. I'm sure you are thankful to God for his faithfulness. And if you want, just join me right now and begin to bless the name of God this morning. Father, you are faithful. Father, we give you praise. Father, we exalt your name. You are worthy to be praised. You deserve the praise. You deserve the honor all the days of our lives. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for being our father. Thank you for being the shepherd of our souls. Thank you because though you are far in the heaven, you live in us. And Father, we experience you daily. Father, we give you praise, Lord. Lord, we give you praise. Thank you for being faithful. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your grace. Come on, if you are grateful, just express your joy to the Lord this morning. Express your gratitude to the Lord this morning. Father, we exalt you. Father, we adore you. There's none like you and there's none to be compared unto you in the heavens and the earth. Lord, we all proclaim your goodness. We proclaim your glory. Thank you because we've been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We are the heirs of salvation. Father, we bless your name this morning. We give you praise because you deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. In the name of Jesus. We're going to be praying, Lord, that our hearts this morning are fetter for the word of God. Our hearts this morning are receptive. We come against every form of destruction. We come against the bars of the devil. We come against the plans of the enemy to take away the word from us this morning because we grow by the word of God. And we declare in the name of Jesus that our hearts are fetter. Our hearts are receptive. In the name of Jesus, your word that is able to build is coming this morning and we receive it with joy. We receive it with gladness. In the name of Jesus, I give no room for distraction. I give no room for distraction. I give no room to the devil. In the name of Jesus, I'm built today by your word. I'm built today by your word. Come on, declare I'm built today by your word. In the name of Jesus, I give no room to distraction. I give no room to the devil. I condition my mind, I condition my heart, I condition my body, I condition my soul to receive your word this morning. In the name of Jesus, the eyes of my understanding are flooded with light. The eyes of my understanding are enlightened this morning. In the name of Jesus, I come to the knowledge of the truth. I come to the knowledge of the truth this morning. In the name of Jesus, let go Father, we give you praise for in Jesus' mighty name we're praying. We're going to be declaring because right now we're in church and the power of God can never be limited. We're going to be decreeing that today there's an encounter, an encounter with the word of God, an encounter with the spirit that for you at home, right now, wherever you're watching, that problem that has persisted for years, that problem that has persisted for months, it lives today in the name of Jesus by the power of the spirit of God that is at work in us. We decree an encounter today. We decree an encounter today. We decree an encounter today in the name of Jesus. Your word that is able to build. Your word and power that is able to save. Your word and power that is able to heal. That is able to transform. That is able to restore. Is at work and present today in the name of Jesus. Kanama Shaba We have tangible testimonies. We have tangible miracles in the name of Jesus. Your power is at work. Your power is at work today. Your power is at work today. Your power is at work today. In the name of Jesus, we receive encounters today. In the name of 
Jesus. Encounter us with the word. Encounter us with the person of Jesus. Encounter us with the spirit. We decree the problems that have persisted are gone right now in the name of Jesus. We decree Lord that faith to stand up in the hearts of men in the name of Jesus. There's an encounter today. Miracles are born from today's service. In the name of Jesus, testimonies are born from today's service. In the name of Jesus, we have encounters. Today will be a day we will not forget for the rest of our lives. In the name of Jesus, today will be a day we will not forget in a hurry. In the name of Jesus, the power of God is activated where you are in the name of Jesus. And you begin to have miracles, encounters, experiences in the name of Jesus. Let go, Saka Baladeshaka. Father, we give you praise. We exalt your name. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. We're going to be using this service today as a point of contact for the rest of this year. We're going to be speaking life to the rest of this year. We're going to be decreeing that Father 2020 may have seemed like the worst part of our time. But in the name of Jesus, we decree that the rest of 2020 will usher us into new dimensions. Dimensions of greater glory. Dimensions of greater joy. Dimensions of peace. In the name of Jesus, come and just begin to speak into 2020. I speak to you, 2020, that you yield your increase for me. In the name of Jesus, we decree in the name of Jesus that the rest of 2020 will be better than the beginning. In the name of Jesus, men may have written of 2020, but 2020 is about to start for me. Men may have written of 2020, but 2020 is about to start for me. In the name of Jesus, hey, greater glory. Greater expressions of your power. Greater expressions of your power. Greater expressions of your power. In the name of Jesus, I experience abundance. When men say there's a casting down, I arise and say there's a lifting up for me. In the name of Jesus, God is not done with you. He's not done with you. He's not done with you. 2020 is about to begin in a greater dimension for you. In the name of Jesus, we speak life into 2020. We speak prosperity into 2020. We decree peace into 2020. We decree open doors in the name of Jesus. We decree opportunities in 2020. In the name of Jesus, our story will be heard of. In the name of Jesus, our lives will be an expression of God's faithfulness. In the name of Jesus, just begin to bless the name of God this morning. Rakotoko, Shakatala, Labodose, Leketelamanda, Shanda, Radoko, Shakatelaba, Rukotoko Talamandi, Shelemende, Rebebede, Kito Kotoko Palada, Shatalaba, Ligado Shalamande. Father, we give you praise. Thank you, Lord. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, the words that we speak, they are powerful. Jesus said to his disciples, he said, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. Meaning he's able to transfer life to every word that we speak. And there's power in the tongue. And the one who created the universe lives in us. It means we are creators. And right now we're going to be creating our destiny. We're going to be creating the rest of this year. In the name of Jesus, you repeat after me as prayerfully as you can. Says the spirit of God is active in me. The spirit of God is active in me. My life is naturally supernatural. Hey, my life is naturally supernatural. By the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. My life is void of mistakes. Because the Spirit of the Lord guides me. My life is void of mistakes. Because the Spirit of the Lord guides me. By the power of God at work in me. I walk miracles. By the power of God in me. I walk miracles. I live in perpetual victory. I live in perpetual victory because the one who knows all things guides and leads me. 
I live in perpetual victory because the one who knows all things guides and leads me. My hands they heal, my eyes they see, and my ears they hear. In the Holy Ghost, nothing dead lives in me. Nothing dead lives in me because the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Hey, it lives in me. Karaba, Shalaba, nothing is dead in me. Because the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in me. My testimony is different. My reality is different. My experience is different. Because I'm powered by the spirit. Because I'm powered by the spirit. Because I'm powered by the spirit. Karaba, I'm powered. And I live an extraordinary life here on earth in the name of Jesus. I'm powered by the Holy Ghost. And I live an extraordinary life here on earth in the name of Jesus. Come on, if you believe it, just begin to back those words with the power of the Holy Ghost right now. I'm powered by the Holy Ghost. My experience is different. My testimony is different. My reality is different. In the name of Jesus, come and shut up. The Spirit of God on my inside is discernible. The Spirit of God on my inside is discernible. In the name of Jesus, come and shut up. If you can pray the Spirit, just pray the Spirit some more. Every word that you hear in this church, in Jesus mighty name we have prayed in Jesus mighty name we have prayed and so father we give you praise father we worship you we thank you for the privilege you have given us oh God to gather as your children to listen to your word we thank you Lord in heaven for everything that we shall be doing today we understand that nothing can work and we can do nothing without you and so we submit to your leadership today. We pray, O oh Father, that the words that you shall teach us today shall gain roots downward and bring fruits upward in our lives. In the name of Jesus. We receive your word with gladness in our hearts. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, glory to God. I'm so stirred up in my spirit. I'm so excited for this powerful session of prayer and leading session. And we're going to the word of God straight. Hallelujah. The theme for today's service is powered by the Holy Ghost. Powered by the Holy Ghost. It is a new teaching series in, our, in this month of July, the first month of the second half of the year, we're going to be considering the Holy Ghost, the series of the Holy Ghost. And today's topic is powered by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And I'll begin today's teaching by reading the book of 2 Corinthians. If you have your Bibles, please turn. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I'm going to consider two texts. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and Colossians chapter 1. But first, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 and 4. The Bible says, But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds 
the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Now turn to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 and 14. 13 and 14. It said, He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood for the forgiveness of sins. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, before I continue, I want to say this. Two things. One, this topic is strategic for the season we are in. And then because it is strategic, and the Lord has something to say to you, I want you to give your attention. Remember last week we learned that you can set your affection on God. And so I want you to set your attention on today's message because it will bless you in no small way. And so from the text that we read, both of them have so many things to say. But one of the many things that they highlight is the fact that two kingdoms exist. And those two kingdoms seek to gain influence in the affairs of men. So we have one, the kingdom of light, which is of Jesus Christ. And we have one, the, the other, the kingdom of darkness, which is of the devil. There are two kingdoms that seek influence in the life of men. And the Bible said, in, in Colossians especially, it reveals to us that once we were in the kingdom of darkness, we were under the power of the enemy. It says, you were, he has delivered us from the power of darkness, the influence, the control of the enemy. We were dead because of the fall of man. Romans chapter 5 verse 12 reveals to us that through Adam, sin entered the world and sin, through sin, death reigned to all men. So, by that fall, Adam submitted the authority, the governance of the earth and the affairs and his affairs to the devil. And so we were controlled by that power. There was an influence of darkness. However, thank God that through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, we have been translated. New King James says, New King James says, we have been conveyed. Other versions says, we have been carried from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. So I've been changed from one level, one place of dominion into another place. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And thank God for that translation. And so there are still many people in the earth. There are still many events in the earth that the devil has control over. That's what 2 Corinthians was telling us. That he is the God of this earth. And so, whoever is not in the kingdom of light, automatically is subject to the influence of the kingdom of darkness. So his point is revealing to us that there is a reason men are not responding to the gospel. Men do not respond. It is not because the gospel is not true. It is not because the gospel is not powerful. But this man, behind the rejection of the gospel, there is an influence that the optical eyes cannot see. He said it's of the God of this world, which is the kingdom of darkness. Now, this translation that you and I have had was made possible by a popular concept in the body of Christ called born again. We use the word often. But what does it mean? Let's consider what this concept is. The first mention of the concept of being born again was said by Jesus himself in John chapter 3. John chapter 3. Hallelujah. Now, follow me gently. I'm, I'm, I'm heading somewhere as always. John chapter 3, I read from verse 2 down to verse 6. So this man came to Jesus by night. The set man here is Nicodemus. He came to Jesus and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he's old? A very sincere question. Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? <laughs> and Jesus answered, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. 
So Jesus is revealing the concept of being born again. Although a man that is born again has no need to go back into his mother's womb to be reconceived and be birthed again. However, in the realm of the spirit, or rather in the spiritual, it actually happens. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 tells us that once we were dead to God, but now we have been made alive by his spirit. So what Jesus was revealing here is this, that although the physical man, his flesh, is not born again, his spirit is actually born again. Actually the term born again. This is what the Bible meant when it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17, if any man is in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. So, even though the physical man is still the same man, even though his mind is still the same mind, even though somehow I can remember my past, my spirit is not the same spirit. It is a new one. So, Tenfi Mitiza was once an unbeliever, was once a sinner. But then when I received and believed Jesus that he resurrected from the dead, what happened which man did not see, but in the realm of the spirit was true, is that my spirit was reborn. That old man died and never exists again. A new one is born. This is what the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 12 verse 2, that renew your mind. Because even though that new spirit is born, your mind must be renewed to conform to that new nature, that new kingdom you have been brought into. And the, 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 the laws, the, the documents of legislation in this new kingdom is the Bible. This is why we renew our minds. And so this concept is made possible. So what does born, being born again now do for you? Being born again now allows for the Holy Ghost, the presence of God to be housed in this individual. In the Old Testament, in the days of the Old, of the Old Testament, the Holy Ghost will send or come upon men and use them for a particular activity, for a particular event, and then he will go. You hear statements or phrases in the Bible where it says, and the Holy Ghost came upon, and the Holy Ghost came upon, because the, the spirit of man did not have the ability to house the presence of God. And so he will come up upon men temporarily, and then he will leave. Because the spirit of man was dead to God. However, by the resurrection of Jesus, I now believe and accept the life of Christ. I am born again. And by being born again, the Spirit of God can now be housed in my members, in my body. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So being born again allows for the Spirit of God to now dwell in you. But whether you know it or not, the day you received the life of Christ, because we do not actually, we do not give our lives to Christ. Because our spirit is dead. What we do is receive the life of Christ. For I have come that they may have life and have it abundantly. So we receive the life of Christ. It is after receiving that we now dedicate and give the life back. So what you do, that thing you did when you were, when you, when you, when you were, called, when you were called on the altar to, to give your life. Actually what happened is you received the life of Christ if it was genuine. If you believed in your heart. And you were born again. And you house the Spirit of God now inside of you. Hallelujah. Now somebody, one of the obvious questions someone is asking is, so who is this Holy Spirit that you're talking of? Who is this Holy Ghost that you're talking of? This Spirit of God that, now, that has now come to abide in me. That has come to stay in me. Who is he? The first thing I want to say, which is one of the most common doctrinal challenges or difference we struggle with in the Christian faith is that the Holy Ghost is not a Pentecostal thing. The Holy Ghost is not a Pentecostal thing. It is not, res it is not reserved for a certain class of people, a certain group of people, or a certain people of certain type of faith. We we'll understand better as we proceed. The Holy Ghost is not a dove Contrary to the picture we have, you know, whenever they want to, when they want to depict the Holy Ghost, you know, you say dove or you see fire or something. A lot of people think that that's what the Holy Ghost is. It's not an it. He's a person, a being. John chapter 14. John chapter 14 verse 16. 
John chapter 14, verse 16. Follow me gently, okay? We're going somewhere. It says, And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper. That he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him, nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Verse 26 of that same text says, But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. So he's a person. He's not a dove. In, you know, the reason for the misconception, you know, it's the account that was written in the Bible. We do not read it as we are up to. Or we ought to. We do not read it. For many of us, it's just mind boggling. We have grown up hearing that, oh, the Holy Ghost is a dove. It's like, come like a dove. It's this and that. And so we think the Holy Ghost is a dove or it's fire. But it's not. And I'm not going to dwell on this because, of course, we cannot exhaust the subject of the Holy Ghost. But then I will give some evidence. I will, I will let us some things. I said it's not a dove. John chapter 1, verse 32. When John was speaking, John the Baptist now, he said that the Lord told me that the man I see the Holy Ghost beside upon is the one that is the Messiah. He said, So John saw the Holy Ghost descend down on Jesus as a dove. He didn't say he descended. Is a dove that descended. If he said that the Holy Ghost as a dove descended on Jesus, we would have known that the Holy Ghost was a dove. But he said the Holy Ghost descended as a dove. So what John saw was the Holy Spirit descending to descending to come upon Jesus. But then the mannerism for which he came seemed like a dove. It is like me describing my friend and saying my friend runs like a bullet. He's not a bullet. It's the mannerism, the mannerism for which he came. Or Acts chapter 2, we don't have time to go into those texts. Acts chapter 2, the Bible says in verse 2, Then came a sound as a rushing mighty wind. The Holy Ghost is not a wind. He didn't come, it's the sound. The sound sounded like a wind. It was like, Ooh. So the people thought it was a wind. There was no wind. Contrary to what people think happened in the Pentecost. There was no wind. There was a sound. And the way the sound came, it was as if it was a wind. And the Bible says, and cloven tongues as fire. Fire didn't appear. <laughs> fire didn't appear. It's like cloven tongues. Cloven tongues as fire descended. <laughs> so people are saying, ah, you, so you are trying to kick out our Holy Ghost fire. No, I'm not kicking your Holy Ghost fire momentum. I want you to know that beyond what you know, the Holy Ghost is a person. This is why Jesus said, I'm not a helper. So like Jesus, who was God walking amongst men, the Holy Ghost is the Spirit of God living in men. He is God. Hallelujah. But we won't dwell on that today. We'll talk about it another time. When we talk on the person of the Holy Ghost specifically, Today we are considering the subject powered by the Holy Spirit. So what does it mean to be powered by the Holy Spirit? What does it mean to be powered by the Holy Spirit? Primarily it means to allow for the Holy Spirit to gain influence. It means that my life is influenced by the Holy Spirit. For instance, your phone or refrigerator or your phone or your television, forgive me, is powered by electricity. Your car is powered by by petrol. So your, that, that, that mechanism, that, 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 that phone, that car, that, that refrigerator allows for this substance to gain influence in his life and then it causes it to function effectively. This is what it means to be powered by the Holy Ghost. A practical example is with the text we consider. Now let's go back to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. Are we, are we getting something? John chapter 3. We're going to read our text again that we read. And we'll see something interesting. John chapter 3 verse 2. He said, This man, Nicodemus, came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher from God. 
For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now stop. Listen. Nicodemus came to probe the source of Jesus' power. He said, I can discern that the things you are doing can be done only by a man that is under the influence of God. And then Jesus, being so intelligent and wise, he prevented him because you wouldn't discern, it wasn't so obvious that Nicodemus was trying to know the secret of God's power. It seemed like a compliment, but Jesus now preempted him in his wisdom and said, Except a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. What Jesus was revealing is this that the secret behind all the things you are seeing is because I am born by the Spirit. There is an influence in me that is causing for these things to be possible. That influence is from the kingdom of God and that is possible because the spirit of God resides in me. And guess what? He was indirectly revealing to us the truth that the spirit of God in him was God in him. Because Nicodemus said, except God be with you, you can't do the things you are doing. And Jesus is saying that it is the spirit of God in me that is causing for these things to happen. And inevitably, inevitably he's saying that the spirit of God is God living in him. Hallelujah. The influence of the Holy Ghost in his life made for all this possible. Look at what the scripture said in Luke chapter 4 about Jesus. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Listen, Jesus is, is God's example of man to us. Jesus is called the last Adam. He's the template for all creation. When we look at Jesus, we know God's plan and idea for us. Hallelujah. And throughout his life, from his birth to his resurrection on earth, everything he did was influenced and powered by the Holy Ghost. From his birth in Luke chapter 1 verse 35, the angel said to Mary, he said, the Spirit of God shall overshadow you. That thing inside of you shall be called the Holy Child. <laughs> and someone is wondering, Hey, but Jesus was born supernaturally. Listen, the seed that gave birth to Jesus was a supernatural one. The seed that gave birth to your spirit, who is you, is a supernatural one. So like Jesus, you are not ordinary. And then now you can house the presence of God. Now look, look at Luke chapter 4. It says in verse 14, Then Jesus returned in the power of the Holy Spirit to Galilee, and news of him went throughout all the surrounding regions. And he taught in the synagogues, being glorified by all. He returned in the power of the Spirit when he was tempted of the enemy. He returned in the power, the influence of the Holy Ghost. Look at what he said in verse 8. Look at what scripture says about him in verse 18. It says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. All this is possible because the Spirit of the Lord has anointed him. Because his life is powered by the Spirit of God. When Peter was preaching, he said in Acts chapter 10 verse 38, how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power, and he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed, because God was with him. God with him is the Holy Ghost living inside of him. God with you is the Holy Ghost living inside of you. Praise the Lord. You must understand something. That Jesus was God's wisdom. Jesus was God's perfect plan for salvation. Jesus is God working on the earth. And he needed to live by the Spirit of God. How much more you? significant things that the resurrection of Jesus Christ did for us was to usher in the ministry of the Holy Ghost to every man. This is why he said to his disciples in John chapter 16 verse 7 he said it is to your advantage that I go. You, you know Jesus said this to his disciples he said I go to prepare a place for you. And they began to feel sad. 
They began to feel worried. Jesus said, you feel sad because I said I'm going? He said, no, it is to your advantage that I die. So it is one of the precious things that his death and resurrection did for us. He allowed for the Holy Ghost to be sent to us. What that means is this, that the coming of the Holy Ghost made the death of Jesus worth it. <laughs> Listen, can I tell you something? Imagine, wouldn't it have been amazing if Jesus was beside you now? I mean, you could hold his hand and walk with him. Think about the experience. You would always see miracles. Whenever you needed answers, you just asked him. Whenever you needed food, he provided. I mean, there will be no cause to worry in this life. Don't you think so? I mean, it will be fantastic. It will be an amazing experience. And that was the same thing that happened to the disciples. They were with Jesus all their lives. They had experienced great miracles. They had seen their needs met. They had seen him answer questions, difficult questions of life and concerning the kingdom of God. And so, just like the disciples, if you were in their position and you were told that Jesus was to be taken away, you will feel sad, won't you? They felt that way too. But guess what? Jesus said, no, do not feel that way. Another helper is coming. Another helper is coming. Another helper is coming for you. And for many of us, guess what? You're wondering, oh, you want to see Jesus. You want to see him. And Jesus is responding to you. No, you don't need to do that. I'm inside of you. I'm living with you now. Hallelujah. <laughs> you don't need to worry. Hallelujah. Let me show you something. John chapter, we read this text before and I want to read it again. John chapter 14. John chapter 14. John chapter 14. <clears throat> John chapter 14. Listen, listen to this. It says in verse 16, Jesus said, And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. Hallelujah. He said, a little while longer, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me because I live. You will also live. At that day, you will know that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. Listen to what Jesus is saying. Hallelujah. Jesus is saying this. That Listen. Look, verse 18 said, verse 17 and 18 said, The Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because he neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him. For he dwells with you and will be in you. Jesus was speaking about the Holy Ghost that will come. And he said, when the Holy Ghost come, he said, now he's with you. But you don't even know. He's around everywhere. However, when he comes, he will dwell inside of you. And then Jesus said, I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. Listen, listen, listen. You may miss it if you don't pay attention. Jesus was implying that that spirit that is coming is still me. He said, I will not leave you. I will come to you. This is what he meant when he said in Matthew. He said, I will know I will be with you even to the ends of the earth. That was, this is him. So you don't need to look up, look in. He's here. <laughs> he said, listen, he said, a little while, verse 19, he said, a little while longer, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me. You will see me. Of course, I know that he spoke about this concerning his resurrection. He said, a little while the world will not see me because I will die. But then you will see me when I resurrect. But then it is even true for later. He says, because I live, you will also live. And that day you will know that I am in my Father. And you in me, and I in you. Jesus was implying that the Spirit of God in him is the Father inside of him. And because the Spirit of God is inside of you, you too are inside of him. That communion is possible because of the Spirit. <laughs> oh, shall I Isn't it a joy? Isn't it a joy to know this? What that means is this, that anywhere you are, God is. 
everywhere. That influence of the Holy Ghost. That influence of the Holy Ghost. No wonder when Jesus was leaving, they felt sad. But when he resurrected, they were not looking again. They were watching. They were not looking up to see when he would come. They began to walk because Jesus was always with them. Ordering their steps, confirming his word with signs and wonders. The same Peter who denied Jesus to a servant girl is the same Peter who stood before the Pharisees and defended Jesus. What changed? Influence. <laughs> Influence. And can I tell you something? You cannot reject the Holy Ghost. Rejecting the Holy Ghost is rejecting God. First Corinthians chapter 6 verse 17 says, But you who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with the Lord. You who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with the Lord. So if you do not allow the Holy Ghost to find expression in you, you are not allowing God to find expression in you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, I said from the start, maybe I didn't, but this is the introduction of the, the subject matter. So we may not go as deep. I trust God that on Wednesday we will go deeper. But let me just leave you with some of the reasons why you must embrace the Holy Ghost. Why you must embrace His influence. Of course, the primary reason is because He is God's promise fulfilled to us. He is God's promise fulfilled to us. He is a gift unto you. The Bible reveals in Joel chapter 2, verse 28, it says, I will pour my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your maid servant and her maidens shall also receive of the spirit. John chapter 2 verse 28. Guess what? It was a prophecy of the days ahead. So when you reject the Holy Spirit, you are refusing to walk in prophecy. You are rejecting the gift of God. Ayahata. You are rejecting the gift of God. Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 27 He said I will put my spirit in you And cause you to keep my commandments Influence So no longer do we need a law To be able to make us live right The influence of the Holy Ghost in us Causes us to walk Circumspect to God's will Influence In Isaiah chapter 32 verse 15, the prophet Isaiah speaking said, He said, until the spirit is poured upon us, and the wilderness shall become a fruitful field, and a fruitful field shall become a forest. He was talking about the effect of the Holy Spirit. It will cause for fruitfulness. It will cause for prosperity. Listen, when the Bible says your helper will come, when Jesus was with disciples, they lacked nothing. When he was with them physically, they lacked nothing. And I told you that Jesus is the Holy Ghost now living inside of you. So the truth can be the same about your life. Or rather, the same can be true for you. That just as how when Jesus walked on the earth with his disciples, he lacked nothing. Everything was made possible. Even for you now, by the Spirit of God that dwells inside of you, all things are made possible. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. The next reason why you cannot reject the, the Holy Spirit is John chapter 4 verse 24 which says that God is a spirit and those that must worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is a spirit. You cannot effectively relate to God without his spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11 tells us that the spirit of man knows the mind of man. And the spirit of God knows the mind of God. Verse 10 of that same scripture says that we know the things, the deep things of God by the spirit. Those things that were hidden, the eyes have not seen, the ears have not heard, that the hearts of men have not been able to comprehend. They have been revealed to us by his spirit. So effective fellowship with God cannot happen without the Holy Spirit. 
Can I tell you something? It doesn't matter the experience you're having now. If you have an, a, a relationship with the Holy Spirit, your experience will be richer and deeper. It doesn't matter what is happening in your life now. If you do not have the Holy Spirit, you are just at the best minimum of your Christian the, be, the best minimum of your Christian work. Your experience is rich. I cannot go on. I cannot even say. I cannot say enough of it. I cannot. I cannot. Your spiritual experience is rich. You know, I found something strange, and I've said this a number of times. Many people, when they see something they cannot explain, when they notice something that they cannot, you know, explain, for instance, when they see some believers manifesting certain things, certain gifts of the Spirit, they kick it away. Your, that shouldn't be your response. That should be your attitude. Your approach should be to desire it. This is what Paul wrote and said, desire spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. You see men praying the Holy Ghost, Katopa, Leshe de Bogosia. You see men intensely pursuing God. You don't say, oh, those bunch. You don't say those bunch. They're not a bunch. That's what I said from the start, that the Holy Spirit is not a Pentecostal thing. Now, mind you, the Holy Spirit is not about speaking in tongues anymore. It's not a, domi a domination thing, a denomination thing. It's the gift of God to you. Your experience with God cannot be reached without the Spirit of God. It cannot. Listen, Acts chapter 1 reveals to us that Acts chapter 1 verse 3 says, To them, that's the apostles, he revealed himself for 40 days with infallible proofs that he had resurrected. But then he said in verse 8, Do not go, wait. So you receive the Spirit of God. So even though they had seen proofs, he had taught them about the kingdom of God for 14 days after his resurrection. Jesus now, he still told them to wait for the Holy Spirit. He still told them to wait to receive the Holy Ghost. You cannot effectively serve God. You cannot please God effectively without the Holy Ghost. For it is God that works in us to win and to do his good pleasure. It is the Holy Ghost inside of you that causes that to happen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And it is true. <laughs> Job chapter 32 verse 8 said there is a spirit in man and is the inspiration of the Almighty. So in our heart, there is a God space vacuum that only the Spirit of God can fill. All in him. Haven't you seen believers whose faith, whose fellowship with God is so rich that they may be going through trials but they are rejoicing? This explains why Paul lived the kind of life he lived. He was a man full of the Spirit all the time. And in prison, he was encouraging men. Rejoice! I say again, rejoice. <laughs> in prison, by telling people to rejoice. Do you know how much of the Holy Ghost you must have inside of you to not be seen within your 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 vicinity, beyond within your experience, to be able to give comfort, to give comfort to those that, are, that seemingly are free, you must have received a lot of comfort. Hallelujah. Another reason why you must embrace the Holy Ghost. Let's turn our Bibles to Ephesians chapter three. I know you know the text, but I want to read it verbatim. Ephesians chapter three. Ephesians chapter 3, verse, rather, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13. It says, Till we all come to the unity of the faith and to the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. And in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, it said, Who wills for us that no man should, that he who wills that all men should be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth? It is God's will. For all men to come into the knowledge of the truth. You cannot come to the knowledge of the truth without the Holy Ghost. This is what Jesus told us. John 16. John 16. John 16. 
John 16 verse 12, he said, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all fruits. For he will not speak of his own authority, but wherever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare to you, all things that the Father has are mine. Therefore I said that he will take of mine and declare to you. So Jesus is saying that there's so much that the Lord will have you know. There's so much the Lord will have you walk into. There's so much the Lord will have you have or wants you to have and become. But you cannot know them except by the Spirit of God. That's why the Bible says spiritual things are descend spiritually. It's the same verse Corinthians chapter 2 we quoted before. Verse 13 thereabout. He said, these things are foolishness to the carnal man because they are spiritually discerned. Maybe you're unable to understand certain things in your life and certain things about the body of Christ because you are not given or submitted to his leadership. He is the truth, the spirit of truth. He will bring you to all fruit. And of course, the fourth and the final reason for today. Of course, there are so many things, but we can't come, we can't we can't we can't begin to go into them today. It's an introduction. I have so much to tell you throughout the month. The fourth and the final reason, of course, which we may we need the Holy Ghost and cannot reject the Holy Ghost is because there is an adversary out there. There is an adversary out there. There is somebody that is seeking for your life. We read 2 Corinthians chapter 4. It said, The God of this age has blinded the eyes of men. So there is an adversary out there seeking to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But it is the Spirit of God that gives life. John chapter 6, verse 63. The Spirit gives life. And so by the life that the Spirit gives, you can speak to a situation that is dying and life will be better. Haven't you wondered how that a woman or a man is said to be sterile, a woman is said to be barren for years and then one night she calls on the name of the Lord and everything changes. It should tell you that there is an influence outside the natural that is not ordinary. And so by that Spirit that gives life, you can cause for a situation to change. So there is an adversary there looking for whom he may, he may destroy. But by the Spirit of God, that seal of God in you, that is the mark of ownership, of divine ownership, you can stand and resist the devil and he will flee. <laughs> I've heard testimonies of men that they were trying to attack and didn't even know the enemy was trying to attack them. I heard a story recently of a man of God who traveled to a hotel to lodge. <laughs> and while he was lodging there, you know, the, 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 the receptionist came to him, rather the, the guys that worked there, forgotten the title, came to him and said, oh, um, can we help you withdraw? Because he needed to get cash. I said, no, he will go himself. And the guy kept on insisting, but he fell the way. And then he went himself and went, withdrew and came back. Upon returning later at night, he was about to sleep in his room and he went to use the restroom. But he noticed droplets of blood around the restroom. And he just flushed it off. And when he just he saw it was blood, but he flushed it out. And in the morning, the same guy came to knock on the door. True life story in Nigeria here. The same guy came to knock on the door. And when he knocked, the man opened the door. And the guy began to weep. And the man said, what's wrong? And the man began to, the young man asked the pastor. He said, sir, what kind of man are you? And the pastor was confused. I said, why, why? He said, normally, what happens is this. We, we do a sacrifice in this room at so, so, so time. So the person that comes to sleep in this period, once you sleep, you won't wake up the next day. But you have slept and you have woken up. He said, that's the reason why I wanted to collect your ATM card and know your pin. So that when I come this morning, 
and I see that you are dead, I will take your card and empty your account before they even come to investigate. And then that's how he led the person to Christ. In this nation, in the western part of this nation, a pastor had an experience. And guess what? He said that he was so tired, he didn't pray. He just went to his room and slept. Can you imagine? But there was the seal of God. The touch not identity. The touch not identity that the Holy Ghost gives. <laughs> Praise the Lord. This is why we must embrace him. Here's a final thought as I tend to conclude. A final thought. Romans chapter 8. Shagabodose peridesia. Romans chapter 8, verse 11. Bombre de shoka hatish. Zifron and Girobos Yaladadisha. Romans chapter 8, verse 11. It says, But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Mm. Listen. <laughs> When Jesus was hanging on that cross, he was about to die. The soldiers pierced his side. And all his blood drained out. His blood drained out and water came out. It was a sign that there was nothing left in him. And he was buried. But when he resurrected and came to his disciples, he was still flesh and bones. But that body was powered by news, was powered by the Holy Ghost. He was still flesh and bones, but his body was powered by the Holy Ghost. Listen, the reason why the world cannot make blood is because that is the source of life. The day men make blood, men will raise themselves as God. Are able to reproduce blood, I mean. So the blood is the life of man. But when this body is cast off, we will put on new bodies. And that body, celestial body, is powered by the Holy Spirit. But listen to this. If that power of God, that Holy Spirit, could power the dead body of Jesus to life, think about what the power of the Holy Ghost can do to this your living body now. <laughs> think about it. Think about it. The Holy Ghost, the creative force from the beginning. In the beginning, the earth was void and full of darkness. And the Spirit of God hovered upon the deep, the face of the deep. God said, let there be light. That creative power of God that turned chaos into the beautiful earth we live in, is living inside of you. So the creative force to recreate darkness and chaos is inside of you. This is what happens when we say to someone, be healed and they are healed because the words that we speak they are spirit and they are life and so spirit contacts that situation and recreates it into what it should be hallelujah praise the lord you want to see what the Holy Ghost can do? As I said earlier, look at what he has done in Jesus. You want to know what the Holy Ghost can do? Look at what he has done in Jesus. And today I'll leave you with one point. Of course, this is where we'll pick up from on Wednesday. One way you can see and experience or have a rich experience of the Holy Ghost that is be truly powered by the Holy Ghost is to acknowledge him in all your ways. He is a person. When men wanted to see the power of Jesus, guess what they did? They acknowledged him. Oh, Jesus, I have a problem. I know you can do it. Do it. The Holy Ghost lives inside of you. And the woman said, made a joke. That now when he wants to pray, he, don't, he doesn't look up and say, Oh, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. He's inside. And we can stand all oh, Wednesday. You do not want to miss the service. But I've set this foundation for us to ponder on these things. To know that man's life, God did not design you to live on your own. It is either you're influenced by darkness or you're influenced by light. 
But for we, we are beings that are powered by the Holy Ghost. We are beings that are powered by the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Just begin to pray to God now. Thank Him for the words you have heard. Thank Him for the gift of the Holy Ghost. Thank Him for the influence of His kingdom in your life. Jacope Ketosia, Likando Beletos, Kindabana Kaseketo, Zazu Keporia Kata, Mengro Dishkaparia Kaze Sufredis Kata. Listen, I want to pray for you now. You are watching me now. I am saying, I've heard about this Holy Ghost for too long, and I've desired the Holy Ghost. Wherever you are, lift up your hands now. Where you are, I declare, in the name of Jesus, from the crown of your head to the sole of the, your feet, the power of the Holy Ghost reaches you now, in the name of Jesus. The power of the Holy Ghost comes upon you now, in the name of Jesus. You begin to experience the power of God in your life from today, in the name of Jesus. That man that is an unbeliever, that is watching me now, I declare that convicting power of the Holy Ghost not only convicts you, but it turns your life around in the name of Jesus. In that room, in that place you are sitting watching me now, I declare that the Holy Ghost, that overwhelming presence of the Holy Ghost fills that place and overwhelms your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Redeemer. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. As usual, for everyone that has an offering or wants to give towards the progress of the ministry, the account details of the church will be made available for you and you can give for the work. But I pray for you that your hands will never run dry. Every hand that is lifted. Every heart that is prompted to give and respond, you shall continue to have sufficiency to continue to give for the progress of the work. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will never experience lack. In Jesus' mighty name. The account videos will be made available for you in the comment section, wherever, whatever platform you're watching this for, and you can give. You can also reach out to us on any of our social media platforms, and we will be in touch with you. If you have any questions, any doubts, any, any concerns, do not be scared or do not hesitate to reach out to us. I will be more than delighted to be a blessing to you. Thank you so much for joining us on today's service. And was, as much as you can, like this video, post it, share it to your friends, your loved ones. You think someone needs to be blessed. Maybe you are listening to this sermon today and you are thinking about somebody. Share to the person. Get the link. Post it on your status. Let people know the truth and about God's word. Even as men in the world spread evil. You can spread the good news. Yes. Hallelujah. Mm. By simply one click. By just one click. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you. Father, we thank you for a wonderful time in your presence. We thank you, Lord, for all you have done for us. We thank you because we see fruits of the words that we've heard. As we continue on Wednesday, we go a much higher and experience greater grace. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. I declare that in this second half of the year, your experience is different. Amen. To you, this second half shall be like a new year. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. What was impossible ceases to be impossible. Amen. The Lord will step in for you Amen. with all his might Amen. in this year. Amen. The family shall rejoice. Amen. They began to cry in the beginning of the year, but they shall rejoice. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.